person in this room has something you've been dealing with. Every single person in this room has something that you've been struggling with. Every single person in this room has something that you are tired of. Every single person in this room has been, have been dealing with some generational crap. Every single person in this room has some desires they want to see God come through on. Every single person in this room has some old things that you know just hinders you in your walk. If it's a lying spirit, if it's your thoughts you can't get under control, if it's you just always have a tendency to gravitate to things that are unholy, if you're always dealing with stress, if you're always dealing with your mind going all crazy, if you're always dealing with health issues, if you're always dealing with I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not big enough, there's always something that you are dealing with and you need to fast. Fasting will break those yokes, the bondages that are on our lives if we would only do it. Listen, when I was going through my divorce with my ex-husband, the Holy Spirit led me on a fast. I love it when the Holy Spirit leads you on a fast. If the Holy Spirit ever leads you on a fast, do not ignore it. Amen. Do not ever ignore it. When the Holy Spirit led me on that fast, I did not know what was ahead. I did not know why I needed to fast. I just knew I needed to fast. And I went on a nine-day fast. And I felt like, I mean, I felt like I was eating the best meals ever during that fast. I was not hungry. I was going to class. I was cooking. I was getting good grades in college. I was doing everything I needed to do because the Holy Spirit gave me the energy to get through it. Because he knows the power of it. Yes. He knows the power of it and the value of it. So, just before God allows you to go through a very difficult time, he will sometimes prompt you to go through a fast. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. But one of the things he does, number one, is your fast will prepare you for elevation. Amen. Amen. Your fast will prepare you for elevation. See, fasting makes room for you. Yes, it does. This is good stuff, y'all. Yes, it is. No, number one, it will prepare you for elevation. Amen. Did you hear that? Just before the Holy Spirit would take you to the journey, He needs to prepare your spirit for what it is to come. Because when you get elevation, sometimes elevation is a scary thing. Sometimes when you know you're getting ready to get promoted, you start thinking, Am I good enough? For this? Yes. Can I do this? Yes. Oh my gosh, am I going to be as good as Him? He's sitting there, He knows everything, and here I am, a little old me. And oh my gosh, I got to fake it till I make it. But let me tell you, before you get ready for that elevation, your fast is going to propel you. It's going to give you that confidence. It's going to give you that supernatural knowledge, ability, supernatural wisdom. You're going to have creative ideas. You're going to hear creative ideas. Listen, when we started this church, now, who are we? We didn't go to that. We didn't go to any other hours. Okay. You, see? <laughs> you see, but the Holy Spirit said, no, this is what I called you to. Amen. We did a whole lot of fasting to get to this place. You see, because the Holy Spirit wants to prepare us for that elevation. Now, let's look at Luke 4, 1 through 4. 1 through 14. It says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to hear this. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. Now, so this tells us he went into fasting full of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit when he was led into the wilderness to fast. So if you think you've got the Holy Ghost and you think you are so big and mad, you fool enough, you don't need to fast. And Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost and still had to fast. Yeah. How much more should we be fasting? Yeah. Amen. 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 Come on. So Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. He's led into the wilderness and he is, he's fasting for 40 days. Verse 3. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So now the devil's tempting him. He's given him every temptation. And, it, it is, and, and to Jesus, it probably sounded pretty good. I mean, after all, he's been fasting for 40 days. He is hungry. Yeah. 
And that is probably a temptation for him. But because of his fast, he does not succumb to the temptation. Do you see how your fast is important for people who are always tempted by something? Right. You put that temptation under the blood through your fasting. Now, Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Verse 5, the devil led him up unto a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want. So first of all, the devil always is lying to you, and you will never even, sometimes people are so deceived, yeah. and you don't even realize that you are deceived. You're just going along thinking you're right, everybody else is wrong. Right. Wow. But when you fast, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. Because the enemy will surely make it all look so right, and I'm telling you, he is good at what he does. Yes, the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. Now, the devil even uses scripture. Yeah. So this tells me yeah. that even if I read the word, if I am not fasting and praying, I can misinterpret the word. Wow. wow. That's true. Do you see how powerful it is? Wow. Your fast is so important. Now, verse 11. They will lift you up on their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to, to the test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. So in other words, he left him thinking, okay, but that didn't work. Why? Because Jesus had been fasting and he had been praying. So the devil will flee from you if you resist him. How do you resist him? What did Jesus do? He was fasting and he was praying. You know, we always say, resist the devil, he will flee. Resist the devil, he will flee. Right. Like, okay, what does that mean? I'm just running like right. the from him? Right. <laughs> no, it, just, it means just this. You resist the devil and he will flee. You do it when you're praying and you're fasting. If you're struggling with something, you got to get to fast. This is not some old-fashioned thing that we used to do. This is something that we can conquer so many mountains in our lives just by like living a fasted life. Number two, it helps you to seek God's wisdom. Seeking God's wisdom. How many people want to be more wise? Amen. How many people have prayed, Lord, give me wisdom on this? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you should not even go and, and do a big project, Stuart, without first praying and fasting. Amen. Even if it means I'm just going to fast breakfast before I make a decision. Even if it means I'm just going to not do coffee before I make a decision or before I do this big project. And watch that move. Watch it move. We should live. Fasting should be something that hits your brain. Anytime you have a difficult situation. If we had to go to court, we were fasting. If we had to, to fight for the, the kids, we were fasting. We were fighting for Kobe to come here and we thought, okay, we're just going to take, take her to court. We went to fast. And the Holy Spirit said, don't do anything with it. Just leave it alone. He's got it. And I would dog on if that woman in college a few days later and say, I just want my boys to be together. Just take it. We didn't even have to fight. Yeah. But do you see what would happen if we would have done it without fasting? We would have done it in our own wisdom. Seek the wisdom of God. How do you get the wisdom of God? Fast. Pray. Hear his voice. Because fasting lines you up. It puts you in a position so that you can hear his voice, so that you can receive his voice, and that you can act on it. You see how powerful it is? Oh my God, this thing excites me. Number two, so seek God's wisdom. Let's go to the scripture, Acts 14, 23. Paul and Barnabas, they're appointing elders for them in each church. And when, and with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord, and whom they had put their trust. I'm going to get this reading right here. <laughs> now, it will keep you from making a mistake. Amen. Keep you from making a mistake. When we were looking for a house, we found a house that we thought was the best house for us. We were we, we had put our money down, we had done the inspection, and then something fell through. It ended up being a flip. So we were like, oh God, what we wanted is so bad. You ever want something so bad that you just willing to up your price and go get a second job off? We can make it work, it'd be all right, we'd be okay. You know, have you ever been in those situations about going along? Yeah. You, you try to talk yourself into something. Yeah. And then we had enough sense to stop and pray. Amen. 
Stop and let the Holy Spirit, Spirit guide and correct us. And then all of a sudden, the same realtor that sold the, the lady the house two years before called us up, who was our realtor. She says, I got the perfect house for you. It's in your price range. It's four bedrooms, two and a half bath, and she, all the lady wants is the amount of money she put in. It was less than what we ever, ever, in fact, we fired the realtor because they said, you're never going to find a house in that price range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We said, if you don't believe with us, then we can't work with you. That's right. right. So we found this woman that believed in God. And, and in fact, this woman said, let's fast on it. Don't mm -hmm. right. know how much you need. Yes, right. She fasted with us. Yeah. And then that came up. And, and, and here's the thing. When you do it God's way, he don't just give you what you ask for. He's going to give you a little bit more. Yes, that's true. He blesses you with just a little bit more. And we were sitting there and with this, the first house, and the, the people in the first house said, do you need this, this deep freeze? And I said, we sure do because we got six boys. We sure could use it. And then when the house fell through, the first thing I said was, God, the devil owes me another deep freeze. That's it. <laughs> so when we get the new house, we go in, and the lady had all the furniture and stuff, and she said, as we're walking through, we said, yeah, we love it. She said, well, what do you want? I said, what do you mean? She said, what do you want out of the house? I said, well, um, we want this couch. We want the pictures to go in. We want the bed upstairs. She said, okay, all right. She said, well, it probably be more than what you, what you, what you, what you asked for, because I'm, I'm probably going to leave some other stuff here. And I walked away praising the, praising the Lord because I thought, God, you honor your worth. We did it your way and you honored your word. But I said, well, the only thing is the devil didn't give me my deep freeze. <laughs> <laughs> we moved into the house. We're all set up in. And here comes a neighbor that was the biggest racist family next door. He knocked on our door. Couldn't believe it. He said, hey, I got this deep freeze in my basement. I don't need any more you want. <laughs> I want to praise God. Yeah. God yeah. What, what the devil stole from yeah. you. You did it your way. Yes. Do you see? Yeah. I'm telling you, you have <laughs> nothing to lose by doing it God's way. Yeah. You have nothing to lose by fasting. You have nothing to lose by praying. Listen, if you think you cannot fast, come on. And I know people say, well, I don't think I can because I can't give up food and I can't make it to the day, blah, 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 blah. Listen, what's at stake here? What do we need from God? What is it that you pray about over and over and for years and years and years to come when you don't need to do that? Listen, if nothing else, the Holy Spirit's going to tell you, don't worry about it. I got this. By, the next, by this time next year, it'll be taken care of. Well, at least you got something. Instead of just constantly praying, and praying. And number three, ready? It'll help you get deliverance or protection. Let's look at that. 821 23. There, by the Hobbit Canal, I proclaim the facts so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask Him for a single, I'm sorry, for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. Now, now, get this. They're getting ready to make this long journey. And he is, it's a, it's a 900 mile trek to Jerusalem, Babylon. And they're getting ready to make this trek. And he, he knows that we probably could use a little protection here because this is a long way to go without protection. But this is what he said in verse 22. He says, I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from enemies on the road because we had told the king of the wretched hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him, but his great anger is against all who forsake him. So he, in other words, he said, well, I'm too embarrassed to ask God to, uh, ask the king to protect us because uh, I already told him that we serve a big God. Yeah. How many of us run around telling everybody how great your God is and we're broke? How many of us run around telling God how great our God is and we, we, we don't, our health is bad, we can't get a good job, we have no money in our bank account, we're overdrawn, we're struggling, we're struggling in our mind, we're always sad, we're always depressed, we always got a long, broad out faith, and then you want to run around and tell everybody, well, praise the Lord, I'm blessed and your favor. <laughs> how many of us do that? Here he is saying, well, I didn't want to ask the 
king because he thinks that we serve a great God and you know, just, mm. <laughs> How do you prove that you serve a great God? This is what he did. So, he says in verse 23, so we fasted and petitioned our God about this. And guess what? And he answered our prayer. Amen. Amen. And he answered our prayer. Now, is that so powerful? Man, I'm telling you, if you don't know what to do and you know you don't have the power that you need, get to fasting. There's sometimes you feel like, man, oh, I feel like I'm just in this prayer room and I'm just praying, I'm just talking, I'm just talking, I'm getting nowhere. My prayers are hitting the ceiling and they're not getting anywhere. You know when you're in that place. Yes. You know when you touch the hem of his garment. You know it because the anointing of God hits you and you can't do anything but weep and focus. It's like you're in that room by yourself. Somebody can come in your, in your prayer closet because you knew when you know they were there. Because you're so in tune with the Holy Spirit. You see, God wants us in that place where you can say, no, I know God's going to do this for us. I know he is. We, we knew that we knew that we knew that God was going to bless us with the house that we needed. We knew it. Just like our van. We knew it. We just knew it. We just, because we had prayed and fasted, God helped us to get our eyes on him. And we locked eyes with him. And it's like, no, God, you're able to do this. That's all it does. It gets you to quit looking at that and start looking up at him. When you fast and pray, let me tell you, the things that you are struggling with, you won't struggle I'm not telling you that your life is going to be a better road. It's, it's not. Because he says many of the trials of the and tribulations of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. But we got to put the work in. Put the work in. Listen, I'm a firm believer that a lot of times people think, well, I'm like, the Lord one day is going to do this. The Lord one day going to do this. The Lord. No, I, I believe that we can prod God alone. Amen. I do. Amen. I believe that he honors your faith. And I believe that God will move a mountain quicker than what you think he's going to move about because you kept your faith. Amen. Verse number four. Fasting will cause you to repent. Yes. Now, a lot of people don't like to hear that because you don't want to admit that you have some things you need to repent for. But we all have something we need to repent for. And sometimes you don't even know you need to repent for it. Jonah 3. Verse 3 says, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. And now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed. And all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on the sackcloth. That signifies they were sorry. They were repentant. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Dust means we are ruined. This is the leftover, the mess. This is the proclamation he used in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flock, taste anything. They made even the animals fast. I mean, that's a serious thing. That we all fast. We got to get out of this way. That, that some of you all got some messages just like that. Some of you all sitting in some room. Some of you all saw it. You made some mistakes. You screwed up just like they did. Listen, if you want to reverse the curse, get to fasting. God honors that. It's not too late. Sometimes the devil will tell you it's too late. You screwed up too bad. You've gone too far. You're too deep in the hole. No, you're not. Get to fasting about it. Verse 8. But let people and animals be covered with sack sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Urgently. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger, anger so that we will not perish. When God saw that they did what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. Do you see that God can do Listen, there are some things you know you can screw up with. There are some things I know I screwed up with. I should have been dead. I should have been this. I should have been. I, should, I definitely should have been a crackhead. Because mm -hmm. everybody else in my family was. Why not me? <laughs> you see? But because I was a praying, even young, I was praying. Because there's no reason why I shouldn't be. But God is merciful. And He will pay attention to your faith. He will pay attention because, you know, you just turn. Fasting causes you to turn. When you're going this way and then you start fasting, you turn. That's what it is. And then you start going back towards him. Mm -hmm. to, number five. If you need a 
victory in your life, if you need a victory in your marriage, oh my God. If you need a victory in your marriage, if you need a victory in your marriage, all you married folks, you need a victory with your children. If you need a victory, I'm telling you, get to fasting. If you need a victory in your finances, listen, I know about that one. Don't we, man? Yeah. We know about it. If you need a victory in your finances, if you're insecure, always feeling like you don't fit in, you don't belong, you're never going to get this, you're never going to grow, you're never going to have, you're never going to do, get to fasting. Because what happens is the Holy Spirit will begin to tell you what his plan is for you. Because Jeremiah 27 said that he has plans for us to prosper us. And if you do not fast, you will not hear what it is that he has for you, that is only for you. If you feel like you've been a failure, depression, you made some bad choices. Yeah, we all make bad choices. But see, the enemy uses those kind of things to keep you back. He wants you to think your bad choices are going to always be your bad choices. They don't always have to be your bad choices. We can actually reverse the curse by simply getting into fasting. Judges 2026. 20, then all the Israelites, the whole army, went up to Bethel, and, and there they sat weeping before the Lord. They fasted that day until evening and presented burnt offerings and, and fellowship offerings to the Lord. Now listen. This they, they fasted just the day. I'm not telling you every time you fast, you got to do a fourth day fast. I'm, I'm presenting to you that when you have a situation, no matter how big or how small it is, give up a little time. Give up a little food. Give up a little song. I'm going to fast just to hear what the Holy Spirit says about this thing. Now, last one. This is good, y'all. Amen? Amen. Amen? To worship God. Number six. Uh, Anna. Now, Anna stayed in the temple all the time. Now she's 84 years old. This woman so believed in fasting and prayer that she stayed in the temple and she fasted and she prayed. Now, I'm not telling you to stay at church all day long because you'll be here by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but I am telling you, she worshiped the Lord with her praying and her fasting. So as you fast, you are worshiping the Lord. You are saying to him, God, I love you. God, I want to do this your way. God, I want to hear your voice. God, I want everything that you have for me. God, I'm going to do it the way you lay it out for me to do. I'm going to do my very best to hear your voice. I'm going to do my very best to pour myself out so that you can pour into me. That's what your fasting does. It's so worth it, people. It's so worth it. And we're going to run through these real quick because it's everything we already said. But this is something I want you to take home with you. I want you to take this home with you. And I want you to look at why you fast. Fasting was an unexpected discipline in both the Old and the New. It was an expected, expected discipline in the Old and New Testament. Okay? So it's not something that's old. It's something that is happening in the New and Old Testament. Fasting and prayer can restore the loss of your first love for the Lord and result in a more intimate relationship with Christ. When we fast, and when we complete this 40-day fast, the praise and the worship that you think is good is going to be ramped up. Okay? So what we think is great praise and worship, we ain't seen nothing yet. That's right. Your fast is going to shed off things that keep us from being so self-conscious. Fasting is going to restore the loss of the first love. You remember when you first got saved? Yes. Lord, I'll do anything for you. I'll do anything for you. We'll go across the ocean. I'll fly in the sky. Yes. <laughs> you remember how you felt? Yes. It's been a while that you felt that strong. You're committed, but it's been a while that you felt that much love for him. Yes. Your fast is going to restore that love that we, we have for our Father. Fasting is a biblical way to truly humble yourself in the sight of God. When you fast, you will get off your little high horse thinking that you have an argument for those that you live with or those that you work with, and you're going to humble down and you're going to, you're, you don't even have to argue because then you're going to know that God is fighting battles for you. It'll humble you down to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. 
I'm going to trust that whatever it is, is that you have for me, no man can disrupt it. No matter how hard they try, no man can disrupt it. When I went through that with my old job, and I was laying on my bed listless, fasting and praying, they tried to take me down. But the Holy Spirit said, no, I'm going to use this as a stepping stone to raise you up. But if I would have fought it on my own, I probably would have lost that battle. But see, God is faithful because I did it his way. Fasting enables the Holy Spirit to reveal your true spiritual condition, resulting in brokenness, repentance, and transformed life. Transformed life. The reason why God can transform us is because we don't even realize we've done anything wrong. We don't even realize we're in error in our walk. Once he reveals it to you, you are broken. You ever done something that you realize you screwed up? You know that feeling of, God, how did I do that? Why didn't I catch that? Why didn't I say that? Why did I do that? And you're just so remorseful, you just want to repent and ask for forgiveness over and over and over. And then when you do, it's like, you, when you do that to a friend, they respect you even more. It, it like it takes your relationship to the next level. It's like, man, I didn't realize I hurt you, I love you so much. That's what I was talking about with the with my husband and the, the flower arrangement. It's like, you won't do that again. Because you know how you inflict the pain. When you fast, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you what's not holy. Fasting will encourage the Holy Spirit to quicken the word of God in your heart and his truth will become more meaningful to you. Oh my God. When you read your word and you're fasting, listen. Y'all don't even know nothing about this. Because when you read your word, you read your word and it's great. But when you read your word after you've been fasting, let me tell you, that word is alive. It's just like, whoo, God, did you just write this just for me? Because that's what it feels like. It just feels like this. This Bible is yours and nobody else. And you read those things, it's like, oh, that's for me, God. No, I just know you put that in there just for me. I'm telling you, the word will come alive to you. Fasting can transform your prayer life into a richer and more personal experience. I told you that earlier. It, it will become live. None of that. Now I'm letting you have to sleep. Okay? That's for the kids. Not for the not for you. Last one. Fasting can result in a dynamic personal revival in your own life and make you a channel of revival to others. That should excite you. People are going to want what you want. You can lead men to Christ by you fasting. Yeah. So quit working on everybody else. Yeah. Quit working on everybody else. Just stop. Y'all don't get no nerves with it. Just quit. People say, well, when, we, when we start this church, they say, well, who's our audience? Who's going to reach? I said, we're going to reach everybody. What do you mean? Who's going to reach? No, we got to focus. And we're going to go after those people. Well, I'm not against any kind of marketing. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying, let's work on our walk with God. Because if we are hungry and they will see the hunger and the love of God on us, they will want what we have. So, so, so work on you. Quit working on everybody else. Work on the, the people that live in your house, the people that are our family that we're trying to change. Let them go. Just work on you and your relationship. Because if you work on you and your relationship with God, God will show you how to minister to them. He will show you how to pray for them. He will show you how to get a hold of them. Or he will show you how to just leave them alone and let him do it. Women are notorious for holding on to people, trying to make sure everybody's okay, trying to make sure everybody's No, trust God. How can you trust God? Get in a position so that you can. Fasting will keep you there. Now, last thing I want to say before we talk about our commitment is when you're fasting, forget it if you think that you're going to feel like you can take the world while you're fasting. The devil does not want you to know the power of your fast. He's going to make you feel like you are starving. Everything that you hate in food is going to look so good. I mean, everything that you want, that chocolate is going to scream at you like it's never screamed before. All of that. And you ain't going to see nothing happen. In fact, sometimes those people that you fasting about, they get ten times worse. Yes. Sometimes when you're fasting, your situation looks even more bleak. Thinking about the people in Nineveh, they're fasting.
thinking, and they are thinking that God is getting ready to punish them and kill them. Now, you know how hard it is to fast during that time? I mean, that's when you just want to just, God is getting ready to destroy us. Let's just get some chocolate. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and have a good meal. Because that's what you want to do. But it's tough. You don't want to have to think spiritual. You just want to think, <laughs> let me just call my girlfriend. And just, just, she went through there. She knows what it's like. I'm just going to call her and just fast. That's not going to get you anywhere else. But when you fast, it'll get you somewhere. And it'll change some things. So, have I convinced you of the power of the fast? Yeah, absolutely. Have I motivated you to say, I'm going to put something on this paper yeah. for the next 40 days and you can do that? I don't care.